First up, she's an analyst and a senior fellow at the Niskanen Center in Washington, D.C. here tonight as our election specialist. Please welcome Rachel Bittercoffer. <laughs> Rachel, we bow now. We bow. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bittercoffer. I, I married that monstrosity, so you'll have to forgive me. Okay, uh, I'm just saying, in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, I, I know, it's a, it's a great it's, joke, it's a though, right? It's a weird yeah. name to have yeah. in a pandemic. Bittercoffer. <laughs> yeah, Bittercoffer. <laughs> okay, we'll go past that. But you are... <laughs> you... At least he's not wearing the mask, right? <laughs> yeah. No mask. Uh, you are sort of the it girl for prognosticators. I think that's amazing, because you got 2018 in a way that nobody else did. What, what did you get right that everybody else kind of got wrong? Well, I mean, thank you. I, and actually, what I got right was um, understanding that this time period we're living in with hyperpolarization and all the extreme uh, partisanship that we have has really changed electoral behavior. And what we were, um, I was expecting to see is a massive backlash to Donald Trump getting elected. Luckily for me, I had 2017 in Virginia to kind of pilot my theory watching. And in that election, everyone thought it was going to be this competitive race between uh, the Democrat and the Republican. And I was telling the whole state, oh, it's going to be this blowout. You're going to see this demographic mm. muscle for the first time really flex in Northern Virginia. It's going to transform the state. And that's exactly what happened. So in 2018, I was, I was lucky I had that experience to build off of. So it's, it's because... It's just Trump hate. You're oh yes, it's absolutely Trump it's, hate. That's, there's um, no other issue. Yeah, so it's yes, not, it's, not, it's, not, <laughs> yeah. it's not. So like, if I had James Carville sitting here, I would grab him by the shoulders and say, "It's Trump, stupid, right? It's not right. the economy." And, right. um, you know, basically, what we look not health care. They said that right, was right, the right. big we issue. Think about like what why Democrats were getting their asses kicked in 2010 and 2014 is because they were they were fat and happy in the White House. The Democratic Party Party is just god awful at messaging, right? The Republican Party tells their voters, you must vote because the fate of the world hangs on you voting. And Democrats like to send their voters like these big, thick policy briefs that are like 20 right. pages long. Yes. So nobody gives a shit about it, right? Right. And so I understood that like taking away that 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 um, comfort was gonna be a major change in the electorate. Yeah. Right. I mean it is amazing to me the way Trump can tell you what he's going to do. I saw him this week on Fox, mm -hmm. and he was, well, sh show the clip. Uh, Brett Baer asked him, like, would you rather face Bernie or Biden? Right. Here's what he said. So mentally, I'm all set for Bernie. Communist, I had everything done. He's a communist. <laughs> I was all set. I mean, who gives it away like that? <laughs> right, you right. know, he's, yeah. he's like the relief pitcher. He's like, I'm going to throw this 100-mile-an-hour <laughs> fastball. Yeah, yeah. You know it's coming. Yes. I know I'm throwing, and yes. you still can't hit it. He's saying, I'm going to call him a communist. Uh, no, I know, I know. He, like, reads the lines. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that said, I, like, wake up every day, and I'm like, okay, how can I make the Democratic Party not walk into a obvious trap? It's like this rat trap sitting there with cheese, and I have to convince them every day, hey, you know, a major component of the GO playbook for 2020 is going to be to capitalize on whatever side loses, the moderates or the uh, progressives, and then target them with propaganda to get them to either vote third party or to uh, not show up and vote, right? right. And so <clears throat> now, of course, we know it's probably going to be the progressives that are targeted, but you're right. He's, uh, he's very obvious about what the strategy is going to be. So, you, but you think it doesn't really matter whether it's Bernie or Biden. You say it's all about Trump and it's all about right. who, who leaves the House, basically, yes. right? Yeah. Getting yeah, your, yeah. it's not about who's the candidate, it's who, who's voting, who, you're, but really appealing to the base, which make, that's Trump's strategy. Right, and it's not so much the base, it's the coalition, right? So when people hear base, I think they think about progressive voters. And when I'm talking about it, I'm talking about Latinos and African Americans, women, college educated women, young people. So that wider coalition that maybe Democrats but they may be left-leaning independents, getting them to show up and to vote, which is really critical because ultimately in the polarized era, if a competitive election's playing out, <clears throat> what's going to determine the party that wins it is the partisan composition of the electorate on election day. And who's worse? I read somewhere that 15% of Republicans, but 20% of Democrats believe that the country would be better off if great numbers of the other party just 
died. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. This is actually some fantastic research by two political science colleagues of mine, Liliana Mason and Nathan Calmo. I really suggest people look at it. Uh, and it. And it talks about negative partisanship. Mine is looking at voting behavior and negative partisanship. They are looking at the willingness for people to actually inflict bodily harm on each other based on partisanship. It's, it is uh, it's disturbing. Ugly. It's, it's yes, very, yeah. it's, uh, it's disturbing you know, also that more Democrats felt that way than Republicans. I thought we were the nice Well, people. you know why? Um, ultimately, right now, we're in this time period where de uh, Democrats are particularly angsty. So if we had asked, I am certain if they had done that survey experiment during oh, Obama, it may have been an a, oh, a then, different outcome. Yeah. Then they would want us to mm -hmm. die. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> but no, but that's it very comforting. It's like, you know, we're having these conversations on Morning Joe and on Chuck Todd's show, and it's like, uh, like, like, like Trump's election never happened. Like, it was some normal thing that America would elect somebody like Donald Trump. Trump broke every metric of electability of what a president should be able to meet in terms of holding and, and winning that office. And then, like, the I think there was a, a time period where people recognized that was weird, and then they just moved on and decided to normalize it, right? But clearly, we are not in a normal time period because we see our institutions failing, we see um, the Trump presidency and the way it's, it's stretching out institutional norms and, and pervading the uh, law enforcement agencies. But it kind of played out the way, the way so. it has in the past. I mean, the, the Democratic side this year reminded me of, you remember 2012 on the Republican I side do. when yep. it was, they wound up with Mitt Romney. They did. But they shopped around. Yes, they did. Every, remember that? Yeah. Herman Cain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Michelle Bachman yeah. was leading, and Gingrich and right. Rick Perry. Everybody got a turn. I feel like that, that, that like, it's yeah. that, it was that way with Joe Biden. There was really some big differences, though. I mean, number one, there really wasn't ever, aside from Bernie and Biden, a, a clear time period. Uh, Elizabeth Warren um, eclipsed um, Sanders in the invisible primary, which was something I had anticipated happening. But free tip, if you ever run for office, no $23 trillion detailed plans, okay? Just don't do that, because that's a really bad but Biden, idea. Biden and, was the, you know, he was the one at the beginning. Right. Right, right, and right. then he went down, well, and other yeah, people yeah, yeah. went up. That's actually fairly typical for one of these um, party primaries. But what we saw, I mean, I just cannot possibly illustrate enough. In 2016, we saw a social movement emerge within a party, the Never Trump par movement. That is not normal, right? The Never Trump movement that I work with, those are all the founders of intellectual conservatism, and they have been excised from the Republican Party. They are no longer in their own party that they right. established, right? And they um, made a critical mistake, though, because they could not get everybody together and winnow down before Super Tuesday. Now, with the Democrats, the math was a, a fact. If they waited till after Super Tuesday, Bernie Sanders probably would have had what he needed in terms of delegates to either force a plurality to the convention or to win it outright. So getting together in a coordinated way, doing that winnowing on Monday night, and then getting that Clyburn endorsement and all that right. momentum, that was a level of coordination that the usually incompetent Democratic Party <laughs> really it shocked me right. like, to see. And, and I think that they, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, right, we should give them a hand, right? Good job. I mean, they did it, right? So, <laughs> so, so I assume yeah. your prediction is the Democrat will win the election? Yeah, so my forecast since July has <laughs> He's said... not leaving still. You know that, though. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, well yeah. we can talk about that next next, next show. Time. But, um, okay. yeah, the, 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 I had said that only Bernie Sanders would be a risk to my model. And the reason is because, you know, going from... I'm running as a fiscal conservative Democrat, which is a bad way to run, it's a weakness run, doesn't mean you should rip off all your clothes, coat your body in glitter, and go naked, you know, skinny dipping with a socialist. Like, there's... <laughs> Gray area in between, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, I think what would have happened under a Sanders nomination is that the Republicans would have been able to trick Democrats into running against their own party nominee. Sure. And then that upsets my model right. because the model well, is a boat that's that. roaring, uh, rowing in one direction. So. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, you, we've got this shit down. Thanks for having me.